You know, opened with that. Fratelloni Hardware and Garden Stores brings you Garage Logic <laughs> Podcast number 1037. I'm trying my best not to lose track of that count because there was some question about that back in January. In fact, doesn't it seem like we've done more than 37 shows yes. since the thousandth show? 100% yes. But that's what it is today, 1037. March 15th, 2023, 70 degrees on this day in 2015, and seven below on this day in 1897. And now, from the mayor's office above the boathouse on the east shore of Spoon Lake, it's Garage Logic with Chris Reavers manning Technology Corner, Kenny Olson from the Krabby Coffee Shop, John Hyde in the newsroom, and of course, the rookie. Here is your flashlight king. Fireworks Commissioner and the Keeper of Common Sense, your mayor, Joe Sushir. I have a way to pay for pothole repair. You right. you found a way to pay for pothole rather repair? than be negative about it, and rather than grouse and moan. Well, yesterday you were. It should have been paid for already with our property taxes. But clearly, the property taxes have gone to uh, support and fund an ever-expanding government full of job titles that are undefinable. I'll agree. Okay, so we need a new way to pay for pothole repair. Ready? Yep. Go fund yep. me. Go fund mm-hmm. me. Bring Naming it. rights. <laughs> I want to name... For 10 bucks, I get to name a pothole. Like the Grand Canyon. The, the Black Hole. Oh, yo, yo, it would be named with your own name. Oh, I just went by that Larry Miller. Ooh, Kenny's that, Hole. That's a Kenny Kenny Hole. <laughs> Stay away from that. That's a bad one. Right. I, naming rights. Most infected. Because you know what else I noticed today? And you're going to find this terribly... Maybe you won't find it terribly difficult to believe. Uh... Fairview Avenue in St. Paul is particularly troublesome. Yes. To the point where it's just a little path you have to follow in each direction or you're you're doomed. You have and you have to be on edge. You you can't be casually driving and daydreaming. Well, you gotta it's, be it's done a couple of things and, and as your mayor who often walks down the service road of life and attempts to understand <laughs> our world, I've come up with a couple of observations. It's improved driving. <laughs> because people have to be so attention. focused. <laughs> You're gonna pull a sil- That's a small silver lining. Well, out I of- got a. I have a second silver lining. Okay. I saw nothing but people smiling, as though to say, "Look at what we're up to." And it was to the point where they thought it was almost fun, including <laughs> me. Huh. You mean driving around the pot? Yes. It was almost an adventure. I don't know if I'm that quite we were there yet. all in this, and and all these euphorians love to preach community. We were a community of focused drivers who were smiling, <laughs> smiling at our misfortune, smiling at the absurdity of this, but nevertheless enjoying it, enjoying mm. the damn things. Okay. Now I want to name them. <clears throat> you know who was really smiling? Mike Schoonover. Oh boy, yeah. anybody <laughs> shop would be. Usually they're Hell standing yeah. at the front window, looking out the window, hoping Here for bad comes weather. Another one. Yeah, now it's just amazing, because some of them are glacier-like. They're, I mean, they're they're going to wreck your they're going to wreck your car suspension. And I have a Tire definite rod. thump in one of my tires. Uh oh. Uh, well, no, even no, when I get you're, on, you're s- hearing stuff again. You, no, you, even you, when I get on, even when I get on smooth pavement, I'm mm-hmm. hearing it. So I believe I probably have a a tire with a chunk taken out of it or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, okay. it's just a it's just I amazing. Find it hard to believe, but okay. Uh, you're chunking. Yeah, we I'm, say I got that, a chunk. I'm, we I'm say chunking. that in racing, tires chunking up. Um, uh, what I really enjoyed about this time of the year living in South Minneapolis is everything's down to one lane. All the small, you know, neighborhood oh, streets. Oh yeah. And I'd see a guy coming up the street, and I would, since I'm in this giant truck, I would automatically find a place, an opening, and pull over to let him pass. And then you really can judge the character of your fellow citizens when they give you or don't give you the big wave and the thumbs up and the smile. Thank you for being polite. And most of them don't. Unfortunately, they don't. Most of them don't. Yep. And it's uh, terribly unfortunate. All I want is one of these. Yep. It's one of these. That's yep. all I want. And occasionally, uh, speaking of the potholes, you would see an oncoming car slow down yep. to almost a crawl 
because he knew you were approaching a big pothole that you were going to swerve into his lane to get around. That yep. was also a fun yep. moment. Yep. yep. See what I mean? We're yep. focused. Engagement. We're Engagement. focused. We're engaged. And damn it, we're happy. <laughs> you just keep telling yourself that. Damn it, we're so, happy. Yep. Stop sending us your vacation photos right. from the beach. We got our own enjoyment here. <laughs> Who needs the beach? <laughs> Uh, and speaking of alley plowing, which uh, came up yesterday because Kenny was surprised that the city of St. Paul does not plow the alleys. Downing notes, he lives in St. Paul and on an alley, and the alley gets plowed right away thanks to the free market. Okay. If I need to, I can use the privately plowed alley to reach the Ramsey County plow, plowed arterial street at the far end of the block. In other words, we have to wait two days for the city to plow the streets, but he uses the alley to get to a county plowed street, and bang, bang, boom. We do not want the city to take on the alleys. They would not get done until this, after the streets, if at all. And uh, P.S., we have also had two weeks in a row of no recycling pickup. I don't know how to solve. That would solve. drive me crazy. I don't, I don't know. know. That I don't know why I came out against that uh, because it's a proven fact that the <clears throat> private sector can handle uh, anything better than the government. Anything. Oh, I'm much in agreement. I'm yeah. much in agreement. John, up your way. Yes. I'm surprised you're. Maybe you are aware of this, and maybe you and the misses uh, plan to take the eco challenge for oh, the month I, of April. I, I don't know anything about it. Well, there's uh, an eco challenge in uh, in Anoka. Anoka County is partnering with EcoChallenge.org to bring you the Earth Month Eco Challenge. Earth Month Eco Challenge 2023 is a behavior change program that helps you take action to create a healthier world. Hmm. Hmm. Earth Month Eco Challenge provides tools and inspiration to turn intention into action and gives participants a fun and social way to think about and support building a healthier community. Wow. What's more, Earth Month Eco Challenge is free and open to the public. Everyone is welcome to select and take actions that best suit their lifestyle and meet their goals. The Eco Challenge allows you to choose one-time or daily actions from five categories, climate and ecosystems, economy and communities, health and equity, education and livelihood, and basic needs and security. Hmm. Through Earth Month Eco Challenge, we are connecting the dots between systems, solutions, and our capacity to create significant global change. Each time our dots are connected, we, we take another step forward toward our better shaped future. So here we are. Let's begin. Go. So go to that site and pick out what you want. Uh, just go to anokacountyminnesota.gov, and uh, the Take the Earth Challenge will be on there. And uh, I'm sorry, Take the uh, the Earth Month Eco Challenge. And w- before you know it, everything will be f- perfect. Yeah, you'll be a happier a world. Oh, is, not worrying yeah. about a thing. Yeah. Is that April, Earth Month? I believe so, because April's yes. the month yep. when we have Earth Day. Earth Day. Earthy, 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 well, I don't Earthy. live... In Anoka County, I live in Douglas County, but I will pledge to not burn any tires in April. That would be helpful. Oh, I'll, I'll really Just try April, hard. right? That would be helpful. Well, I uh, yeah, because I, I do have a bunch of tires I need burning. Then yeah. I, uh, I went there, Joe, just now, and I yeah. clicked on it, and uh, there are 17 things they want you to to do that will make global goals for sustainable development. <laughs> okay, so, give us a few, John. Uh, sure. Uh, number one, no poverty. No poverty. Uh, that's the eco, yeah. And uh, huh. it, it goes on from there. Number two, zero hunger. Okay. Three, good health and well being. Right. Uh, four, quality education. So far, there's been nothing that has to do with the this environment. This is really odd. Not yeah. yet. Uh, it, we will get there, but it takes a minute. Number five, gender equality. <laughs> gotta, gotta have that. Because that's going to uh, help the environment. Uh, yeah. Some people get hot sooner than others. <laughs> yeah. Especially those gals, uh, our former right. gals in their 50s. Uh, number six, there we, we get an eco here. Oops. Clean water. <laughs> I'm trying to save you. Shut up. Clean water and sanitation is number six. Okay. Uh, seven, affordable and clean energy. Sure. Uh, eight, decent work and economic growth. Okay. Has uh, nothing to do with the environment. Uh, 
Nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Sure. Uh, Ten, reduced inequalities. Well, you have to do that, yep. Eleven, sustainable cities and communities. Sure. St. Paul has a sustainability... What was coordinator his, or a director? director uh, I thought it was yeah. Zahar. What's his name, Rook? It is. Uh, and he's unheard of. Uh, no, uh, uh, he, along with all the other meaningless job titles, there's we have not heard from our Russ Stark. Russ Stark. He's Russ our Stark. sustainability coordinator, and he is invisible. You don't really see him in the news, or a, a program comes out. He's or... not sustaining anything. Anyway, John, I'm sorry. Go ahead. That's all right. I'm going to skip the rest, but I will tell you, and you're not going to like this part, uh, after I clicked on it, all of this comes from the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. So it's all based on that, the UN. uh, It seems like none of it has anything to do with climate change. No, it's communism. Yeah, exactly. Well, uh, and that's Anoka. Now, you could mm-hmm. make the argument that Anoka is, well, here, here's, here's what we now have to observe. Anoka is not far enough away from the country's tallest right. buildings. I thought there was once a lot was, of... Once, once was, was, but I don't think it is anymore. I was under the impression there was a lot of good old boys up in Anoka. Well, there, there is, yeah, and, and over where I live, Coon Rapids, yeah. that yeah. Whole, this whole region. Guys that'll it, pull you out of the snow bank in the winter bingo, with their big-ass truck, those kind of good old boys. I think they're disappearing in Anoka. No, but what you're seeing is this mindset is seeping to the outer ring suburbs. That's, I guess, what I was trying to get at. Yeah. The uh, the governments uh, get full of themselves, and unfortunately, it's leaching. Yep. Would you say seeping? Seeping. Seeping, seeping. or leaching? Yep. <laughs> into uh, areas that uh, we used to think of as being insulated from the country's tallest buildings, but Anoka went so far as to just seize upon the UN BS. Yeah. yeah. That's even worse than That's lazy. And what- you can sign up, and right now there are 3,359 participants, and uh, they're all, uh, I think that's the entire world at the moment. So <laughs> I don't know how big this will get, but right now they're at about 3,300 participants. In Anoka or the world? No, I, this looks like the world from what I'm well, seeing. Well, that's, uh, that's not very many people to save the world, is it? <laughs> not uh, not at all, no. Uh, is Greta on board with this? We we can't do anything until we get the okay well, from she Greta. she is the world's leading scientist. Yes, she is. <laughs> with a deleted tweet from five years ago. Well, damn it, the, inconveniently enough, the world still exists. You think she woke up and went, damn it. Damn it. <laughs> Everything I said was a lie. <laughs> well, John, you and Mrs. Hyde pick one, and you can update us occasionally on how you're doing. I, 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 th- I have a thing. I don't know if I can, Joe. Do that? <laughs> I can fit where, it in. I'll try. Yeah. I'll try. Where are we at with no mo may? Are we going to try that again? Oh, I uh, bet that year? comes back. How about oh. no mo snow right. may? How about no mo snow? <laughs> right. Let's go. <laughs> My God. Hey, we got four to seven coming tomorrow. I know. Tomorrow and night. I hey, will, no. I'm, uh, because Kenny has chastised me, and I think justifiably, I will continue my space management. It's kind of like golf in the fall. You know, if you get a hole in one, it should count until the snow flies. There shouldn't be an arbitrary date at which hole in one insurance concludes. And then two days later, some guy gets a hole in one and he doesn't get his two bucks from everybody else in the club. And he whines like so, a sissy. So well, hole in one. So it's like hole in one uh, uh, in golf. You gotta you gotta practice space management. Until there ain't no more snow. Joe, tell the GLers because you really restored my faith in your um, your citizenship and garage logic. Tell the GLers what you told me about your driveway before the show started. There's two driveways in my neighborhood down to pavement, and I'm one of them. All right, huh. much uh, much respect. What that cost you? <laughs> what do you mean? You know I what? Did it myself. I don't. Think, I don't know if that matters. Does it? I did I it myself. Yeah, well, that's I, a good point. Yeah. And the guy, the guy uh, who I'm second to, who is the best in the neighborhood, I mistakenly uh, leveled against him a crime against humanity. <laughs> I said, you know, no wonder your place looks so good. 
He was a former Boreas, so I call him King. Mm. Mm -hmm. King, I saw a plow truck at your drive. No, you didn't. <laughs> the hell you oh. did. I do that myself. Them's fighting did he, words. Did he throw off the gloves? Just he, he, the was gloves ready to, he was ready to hit the mattress. <laughs> and, and I said, King, I saw that. He said, that was at the, that was at the neighbor's. That was Come not on. my house. <laughs> Because he not only snow blows at 6 a.m., then he has the blower out because he's north-facing. And uh, you could have a picnic lunch on his driveway in the dead of January. Nice. It's just perfect. Perfect. Love that. And he takes, effort. takes great pride. So I, partly because of Kenny and partly because of him, I was shamed this last go-around. Uh, even though I said I wasn't going to go out and do it, I did it knowing that I'd get help from old Sal, too. The next day, yeah, no. and I'm back to pavement now. I'm a north-facing driveway, and uh, I'm not shamed. I'm I'm just leaving it. You just don't bother, do you? I'm not but your 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 neck scale has always been called into question. Yeah, yeah. And you know what? I don't. You don't. You know, me. You know what? You're, you know what you are. You're comfortable. There's with other that. things to worry. Wait about. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Was this the same north-facing driveway a couple of weeks ago? You said the. The car slid downhill, yes. parked at yes, night. Indeed. Indeed. Great. It's it great. tends to. Uh, uh, Gabe left for school, and I got a uh, call and saying, your car is halfway into the street right now. And this well, is where you box down. the Kia in? It slid down overnight. Uh, if, if the Kia is on the street, we box it in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, th the hill goes down towards the street. Correct. Oh, okay. And All right. you know, if there is ice up there, but what I've done, you're not north facing. Having been there, your your driveway would be east facing. <laughs> Same thing to him, Joe. Yeah. He doesn't need north, it. south, east, west. You know what you need to do oh, is uh, your front do door like is east facing. <laughs> yes. But well, so my driveway's driveway. on the side. Oh, Matthew. So you got to do you're like I, you got to come over more often. <laughs> With um, the uh, the here, pontoon, D's nuts. When I keep it over at my mom's, I throw an anchor out on the sand beach and, and keep her strapped to the beach. You need to do that with your car. <laughs> no, uh, by throw design. By design. I mean, I uh, idiot savant um, is what I am. <laughs> and when I did um, the last time, I did shovel and move some of the ice where it meets the street. There's about a, I don't know, two, three got, inch chunk you got thing a, about like a that. Jump. Yeah. A whoop. I, I've got a, 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 a natural curb, so it won't go over that now. So right. I know if it's slides down, I have it's a chalk it right there. It's a tire chalk. Yes, it's an ice chalk. It's an ice chalk. Ah, don't worry about that car. It'll we'll be out. fine. Right. My ice chalk. Chalk. It's not that busy of a street anyway. I put that there for safety purposes. Yes, yeah, right there, officer. <laughs> you want to take calls on. Which way the GLers uh, driveways face? No. North, east? No, I do not. Yeah, I'd love if I get the time in the back. No, okay. Yep, okay. <laughs> See, I want to introduce you to a new sponsor, but it's not new to me. I've known uh, the Mueller family all my life, literally all my life. We were neighbors, and they run, of course, the Mueller Memorial Funerals and Cremation. I used to even work there one summer. I worked for Mueller Mortuary. Uh, at a, a Johnson Parkway location. What'd uh, you do? What was your job? I was ground maintenance. Whoa. Really? I did walk in on a cold one once. Yeah, it's part of the gig. And, and, part uh, of the gig. It was okay. It was okay. <laughs> uh, they've been doing this for more than 75 years. This is not a fun topic. Uh, and I can't say that Mueller makes it fun, but you know what he does? He makes it comfortable. He is a sharp guy who knows this is a time of grief, but he knows how to handle that. And he knows how to take care of it, and it'll make you and your family feel better because he takes care of the difficult details. You got that? Mm -hmm. All right. They got a White Bear location, mm -hmm. actually has a bar. Now, I'm not advocating that you go to a, a funeral and get hammered. I'm just saying he's, uh, he's a little hip to what the modern grievances might amount to. Let's just have a drink here and talk about Dad, huh? Let's, you know, and, and you meet people and you talk to people you haven't talked to in a long time. That's the first in the nation, by the way, the way he established that is the first in the nation. I know this isn't a fun th thing to think about, but when you learn a little bit more about what's involved, you understand that it doesn't have to be an overwhelming and frightful situation. Mueller Mortuary takes care of it. Scott uh, Mueller has written a great book. It's called What to Know Before You Go. And he answers the most commonly asked questions about death, grief, and funerals in an informative way. And again, it's going to leave you feeling comfortable about this because it has to be done. It's like an estate plan with my friends at Eckberg Lambers. Right. It has to be done. And uh, no one's going to handle this for you more comfortably, more agreeably, more charitably than uh, Scott Mueller. Go to 
MuellerMemorial.com to learn more. You'll learn more here by accident than elsewhere by design. Here's Joe Suchere. Uh My inbox proves that you GLers love talking about sea foam, and I think I can figure out why. It's It works fast. It's really easy to use. Dump it in and go. And uh, us people that use sea foam, we love to tell others about it. It's, it's the ease, ease of use, the results immediate and long term. It's basically insurance that actually goes to work for you right away. Seafoam cleans and lubricates critical engine parts so our engines run better and they last longer. And you can get the stuff everywhere. Auto parts stores, big retailers, small retailers, knack hardware stores, farm stores, sea stores. I even see it in grocery stores, right, right in that little aisle that has one uh, quart of oil and uh, a wiper blade that fits a Studebaker from and 1963. a can of old-fashioned car wax. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that really old can the of The old turtle oil. wax. <laughs> and there it is, Seafoam, uh, always flying off the shelf. Such and I, we lean on Seafoam every day. A wonderful product in a world of bad gas, Seafoam. I've always wanted to believe, uh, even though the Academy has failed... I've always wanted to believe that the teachers themselves are are not interested in confusing children about their gender. I, I've wanted to believe that that's become uh, uh, hyperbole uh, driven by uh, the Margaret Taylor. What's her name? Margaret Taylor Green. Green Smith. Well, something. No, yeah. They want to teach them reading, writing, and arithmetic. I think that's what right. I've always I wanted think to you're believe. Right. But I, I've been alerted by a couple of emailers to a story in uh, the Alpha News site in the Twin Cities uh, that says an undated video. Well, that's problematic right there. Okay, I want to date. Timeline. An undated video has surfaced of a public school teacher saying that her goal is to confuse kids about gender. The teacher, whom parents have identified as a Moundsview public schools teacher, explains in the video that some of her students can't tell if she's a boy or a girl, meaning the students can't tell if this teacher is a boy or a girl. Okay. And I'm looking at a picture of her, and I can understand why these students might be confused. All right. Alpha News reached out to the district multiple times to confirm the identity of the teacher but receive no response. Now, this is tough because at that point, if I'm the editor, I'm thinking, you don't have a story. You got to dot some I's and cross some T's. Either name this person or... So where am I? Am I to continue the story or would I be guilty of my own observations? Uh, Out of my own curiosity, I would say continue so you can see if... You find uh, some more facts where somebody actually... In the video, the teacher is wearing a school lanyard reading Valentine Hills Elementary. All right. Okay, so we've got a school. And she says in the video, the students ask the other teacher if I'm a boy or a girl. The other teacher allegedly asked the students if this really mattered, to which one student responded, no, I just can't figure it out. It's just so hard. I can't figure it out. And I was just like, she used the like word, Mm -hmm. like a 12-year-old girl. Uh, This is the teacher now saying, and I was just like, yes, that's the goal, the teacher says in the video. Yes, that her, that's goal, the goal. her goal is to, confuse. Is to, is to have these c- kids confused about what gender she is. It's like uh, Saturday Night Live with Pat. It's right. time for androgyny. <laughs> it's just Pat. Now, it does say here the woman in the video has been identified by parents and former students as Courtney Ryan, a Valentine Hills Elementary School music teacher. Oh. One parent said she believes the 2021-22 school year was Ryan's first year at the school. I'm very upset that this teacher is saying that her goal is to confuse kids. Her personal life has no place in the elementary school, the parent told Alpha News. She is wearing a mask and her lanyard, which she wears while on the clock as a teacher paid by taxpayers. She's not wearing a mask in the video, but you can see the mask hanging down uh, her neck. Okay. The parent shared that her only concern about the teacher when her children attended the class was a project they did about protests through music. 
related to the book Change Sings by Amanda Gorman. The parent recalled that the two choices for topics were a prison hunger strike and Colin Kaepernick. Well, that doesn't sound fun for the kids. No, really doesn't. This project felt more appropriate well, that's gotta get the horn. at the middle school or high school level, the parent said. A second parent of another former student of Ryan's told Alpha News that he pulled his youngest daughter from Valentine Hills because of teachers and lesson materials like this. These are discussions about life, sexuality, and human development that parents should have with their children, he said. I agree with the parent. He told Alpha News that the parent-child relationship is one of the most important and fundamental relationships for a child's growth and development. When an elementary teacher injects herself into that relationship, why don't you play this video for us, Chris? Just go to mm. Alpha News, and right. it's right there. Mm. The story's right there, and I presume you can click on the video I did out in the other room. The parent told Alpha News that the parent-child relationship is one of the most important and fundamental relationships for a child's growth and development. When an elementary Elementary teacher injects yourself into that relationship between a parent and a child by making the child confused about gender. They are violating the trust and relationship between a parent and child, he said. I, I happen to agree with him. But Ryan did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Now, <clears throat> Uh, I don't think Alpha News would have printed this if they were if they thought they were on shaky ground. Is that a safe assumption? I think that's a safe assumption. They, they they apparently believe they have this nailed down that it's a teacher at Valentine Hills Elementary School. Now, why and what video this is? Can you tell Chris what is this? A, one of it her. It looks like it's a um, it's a TikTok video from her own personal account. And this would if be, I had to guess, that's what I would guess. And then, well, why don't you play this teacher? One of my coworkers told me that they were talking to some students in the hallway and they asked, the students asked the other teacher if I'm a boy or a girl. And the teacher was like, does it matter? You know, she's cool. And they were like, no, I just, I just can't figure it out. It's just so hard. I can't figure it out. I was just like, that's the goal. That's the goal. That should not be the goal. I don't huh. think that should be the goal. That shouldn't be the goal. <clears throat> uh, Gee, I wonder why enrollment is declining in schools, public schools. Now, when she says that's the goal, she gives a little fist bump. Right. That's the goal, maybe. <laughs> the goal that's is to educate. Goal. That's not about the you. The goal is to have children confused about who you are, Whoa. you Careful. person, you. Careful. Careful. <sighs> I can't help but think of the wise wise words of paul westerberg when he sang here comes dick he's wearing a skirt here comes jane you know she's sporting a chain same hair revolution same build evolution tomorrow who's gonna fuss <laughs> they love each other so yeah androgynous yeah but that wasn't talking about little kids. No, no, it wasn't. No. But that's the whole story. That's all that was going through <laughs> my mind. And I still want to believe, I still want to believe that this person would not be reflective of the average teacher. Yes, 100%. Uh, I, but why then does this... Thing, why is she put attention? up with? I'd fire her what? ass in what? about 10 seconds. But does she, she doesn't make it clear why she wants to confuse the kids. Well, and that's what that's where we are left to draw our own conclusions. And, it, and that's not good for her. She's making it about herself rather than the kids. Yeah. The conclusion I draw is that she thinks it's a better and healthier world if it got rid of gender. No. That would be the conclusion I draw. Why? Why would it be? Because because she's struggling with her own identity. She probably would find comfort in the in the belief that everybody should struggle with their identity. I don't want everybody to be pat. No. Uh, uh, you know, it's yes, sir. Not that pat. Oh. Different one. I don't, am I a boy or am I a girl? That's what keeps me up at night. <laughs> That's Paul. Lynn. Yes. The and roommate. My prostate. <laughs> uh, the roommate and I um, dress alike, but. Um, 
But she looks use. a lot better than you. Yeah, do. yeah. <laughs> We're both wearing jeans and t-shirts. But, yeah, you but know, her stands out. Yeah, yeah. The you guys are saying like hi to. Man they're saying Mountain hi Dean to her, and yeah, yeah, gravy on your beard. Right, yeah. right, right. Her beard is way better than yours. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. That was just a joke. <laughs> Have you followed the story of the uh, the kid? He's now 12. This has nothing to do with this teacher in Shoreview. I'm going to just get rid of that. The hell with her. That's a her, by the way, I can tell. Okay. It sounded like it. But maybe it's a her who doesn't identify as a her, you know. Uh, why am I touched? Well, because I'm a sap. But in this case, for a good reason. Uh, remember the kid Ladavian? Uh, John, I'd have to find his last name. He's now 12. He was an innocent shooting victim yes. in a car in North Minneapolis. Still has the bullet in his head. Yes. And it's greatly affected his ability to live a normal life. He well, can't sure. walk. He, sure. he's, he's, uh, he doesn't talk anymore. But apparently he is capable of learning. And, he's, and his grandmother seems to be the spokesman for the family. Uh, and she has great hope in him that he's he's going to walk one day. He's going to talk again, and and I hope she's right. But she said if she had a uh, a handicapped access van, like a Rolex, R O L L, whatever. Yeah. If she had a handicap, and I don't think she's. I don't think she's running a scam here. She's saying we all, we have to do everything on the bus. And if I had an access, uh, a handicap access van, I could get him to see the world, you know. And I'm thinking, well, how much could that be? How much? Hundred k. Yeah, that's well, I mean that's guess. nothing. Let, yeah. Lada- what's his last name, John? Ladavian Garrett Jr. Yep. She, grandma calls him Junior. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he was on the news again last night. Apparently the ang- and he's been on the news before. The angle this time was she needs this van. And and I think she'll get it. Uh, I think someone will step forward because she seems very sincere. I don't think she's looking to go joyriding in a I didn't get handicapped access this van. This is legit. This is not. Yeah, yeah. but you know that's random shootings in North Minneapolis. Just took out this innocent kid. And somebody knows. Somebody does know. Mm-hmm. And I think it was it. in uh, April of 2021. Yes. Correct. Does yep. does she have a GoFundMe site? Uh, is there any way the elders can not help that I'm out? I'm aware of. Not that I'm aware how, of. how do we? How do we help? Oh, uh, look up Ladavian Garrett Jr. and maybe there'd be what a, news uh, channel did you? This was on uh, I think five probably. Okay, it was either five or four. I switch it was, at commercials. It was five. At the commercial, I switch. Uh, it'd be fun to help her out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah whoever has the weather first, that's who I watch, and then I'm five. done, so I can read. <laughs> You know, good lord, <laughs> gotta have the weather. I might become a uh, weather watcher. Really? I've yeah. Also I'm tempted. Sign up. Yeah. They're, I'm they're, sign up. they're looking for us. I know. I want to. Yeah. I want to do it. Are you oh, willing you to get go a badge, out? I wonder. But are you willing to go out at <laughs> two in say, the morning? You do realize you're gonna have to leave St. Paul. Yeah. No, you, you go gotta, in your backyard. You got to get yourself up on a hill and watch for uh, hey, get encroaching a gauge, tornadoes. Get a rain gauge. Because to you, there is no weather outside of... Yeah. yeah. It's all about me. <laughs> Let me, uh, uh, if I may add, Ladavion, yeah. there is a GoFundMe Good. to raise funds for his expenses. Right. I don't know if that means a van. Hopefully it does. John, why don't you include yes. that in your notes to me, and I'll make sure that I post okay. that to the uh, sure. Garage Logic account at the okay. conclusion of today's show. They've raised they 14, th- yep. 14... Oh, I'm sorry, John. Go ahead. No, go ahead. They've raised fourteen thousand five hundred forty dollars so far. Hey, uh, throw it on Twitter, Chris, so I can uh, retweet it on my traffic account. All right. Their goal is fifty thousand. I do think a van like that, uh, like Kenny said, would be probably more because they're special. Well, an auto dealer should step up. Why don't mm-hmm. uh, Why don't the people from Feeding Our Future sell that airplane they bought and give yeah. it to this gal? Well, it's 50 for the van and another 50 for the equipment, right? I yeah. Mean, but it's just one Lamborghini from the food the fraud people would cover the van. Yeah, no doubt. 
Well, God bless Lisa Paulson. She gave twenty five hundred dollars. Yeah. This was in Minneapolis. That five hundred k that we spent on the diversity and equity and inclusion, that would have uh, gone to take oh, care yeah, of this. Exactly. Yeah. It's funny the way the money never gets put where it should. Right. I'll see. What do you think of free lunch for everybody? Two hundred million bucks a year. That ain't that's, free. That's for everybody. And uh, doing paperwork, Joe, it's such a nuisance. I don't want to fill out a form. You know, I was telling this to Joe earlier. Um, I watched that clip from Nicole, who used to do weather here. When did uh, she become nuts? I don't know. I don't know what you're referring to. <laughs> Nicole Mitchell is. The I know who that... you're referring to. I don't know what you're referring to. She's the one that just said what Kenny. Said that filling out paperwork. Yeah, it's for her fee- bill. It's, it's, her, it's bill. her bill. Oh, it's her bill. I'm sorry. It's Nicole yeah. Mitchell's bill. Right. Yeah. I keep forgetting she's a legislator. Right. She right. used to be a former uh, Channel Five meteorologist. Right. Correct. And uh, it's her bill to feed everyone, huh? Mm-hmm. Two hundred million dollars a year. Right. <clears throat> well, can a kid still bring? Their own lunch just I was asked this very thing in my home last night. Because I'm not eating that crap they make. Well, she said, so do we? does this mean I still have to send lunch with the boys? I said, well, it hasn't been completely enacted No, yet. it wouldn't it take effect until, what, 2024? I think the next school what year. What is that going to cost the taxpayers? Is it covered in the bill? A hundred million a year. Good. Wow. My, oh, geez. Good wow, my OGs. And walls bad, is... Bad words, bad words. <laughs> yes. Trying to edit. Good wow, try, my OGs. I'm, I'm walls is edit. anxious to sign it. <laughs> but on the level of, I guess, the way I look at it personally, of all the things to be outraged on, of us spending money, this isn't at the top of the list for me. Really? Well, I don't know where I'd place it. I probably would agree with you. It's not at the top of the list. Because, there, unfortunately, there are a lot of kids that, and, Rook, you know this. You have someone in the on the inside. There are a lot of kids that, unfortunately, they rely on school. Yeah, but, see, there's such a dichotomy here or a paradox. I don't know which word. The the people who run us are not DFLers. They're extreme, hardcore leftists. And they love nothing more than to demean, to demean wealthy people, to demean capitalism, to demean achievement. They're all, they're all evil as far as I'm concerned. And yet, when it comes to feeding the kids, they would, they'll apparently sacrifice that belief in order to not embarrass a kid who needs the lunch. I'm thinking it might be uh, wiser just to feed the kids who need the lunch. Or is that too cruel to the kids who need the lunch? Um, In other words, the only reason they're feeding everybody is so Johnny over there who doesn't have any money doesn't feel bad. Right, right. Well, you know what, Johnny? Maybe you got to feel bad. <laughs> That'd save us. A, if, a if, if Johnny feels bad, it'd save us about $100 million a year. <laughs> Put a price on feelings. Come on, Johnny. Johnny, come on. Hey. It's $100 mil. Hey, Get yeah, over yeah. it. Yeah, make a sandwich. No, I don't know where to be on this, but this notion that it's free is absurd. Uh, there is no free lunch. Literally, this is costing $200 million a year. A Republican from uh, Anoka joined in and uh, is also on this bill. Yeah, well, we Jim now Abler. know about Anoka. They're following the U.N. dictates. No, <laughs> Abler's not a liberal, trust me. The guy who's on the, who helped sponsor it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's Anoka, though. They're, they're shot. They're gone. It's, it's Anoka. They crave. They got the eco challenge going. That crazy nut uh, Driskowski from Mazeppa. Haven't we talked to him a few times? Yeah, Lo- love that guy. Uh, he said, and this is just an outrageous idea, Steve. Uh, the money should be invested in efforts to improve reading, math, and science proficiency. Steve, how dare you? No, no, <laughs> no. He's wrong because what he's doing, what he's doing, is calling more money to be spent on education. There is, there's already enough spent on education. Wow. Boy, Joe, why do you hate the kids? You I do. Can tell from you this really, you really, really hate them. to death. Yeah. <laughs> so, Joe, what do you make of the fact that they're including um, families whose parents could easily afford school well, that's lunches? What that's what we're talking about. So yeah. the, the process to do that, though, would require you to submit your income tax statements, right? Uh. I don't know what I mean. Nicole, how I don't know what Nicole Mitchell will require for a submission in the. Well, bill. I, I don't think she wants um, a requirement or submission. This is all kids. 
Well, isn't there now a requirement for free lunches? So I, I are guess they, I don't so know. Don't she, according to that clip that I heard, she said that you have to fill out an endless amount of paperwork. No, no, wait a minute. Words. If it's free for every kid, then why do you got to fill out anything? No, the right. current, the current right. setup. Oh, she's current, saying yeah. this would eliminate that oh, she's step. So she's of the mind that if it's going to be free for everybody, no paperwork. Right. Just eat. Right. Now, right. what about those 300 kids that don't belong to, what was it, Harding High School that are uh, constantly roaming Ooh, yeah. the halls? Oh, yeah, do they get the chow down? Do, do they qualify? Yes. But yes. you have to sit down. And In fact, many of them would go to school just for lunch. Ooh. You it's kind of like us when we come here. And then go back to roaming the halls <laughs> right. without attending class. They can't even be called students. They're just freeloaders. Yeah. Why don't oh, we take a time out for Johnny Wait a second. Heights? Wait a second. Chris just stumbled on a great idea. Can we include the HBI cafeteria yeah. in on this bill? <laughs> no. Then, then I'm all in. <laughs> <laughs> Although you'd have an in with her. I do miss. She worked here. I do miss the pandemic days when we got free chow downstairs. That was great. Hmm. Grab and go, baby. Grab fun. and go. That Thank you, Chairman. Uh, I've told you about Mueller Mortuary. I want to tell you about Eckberg Lammers. Uh, you need an estate plan, and there's only one reason. You don't want the government involved in your affairs. You want to leave behind a smooth operation from your family. You've got three objectives with Eckberg Lammers. What do you got, Brasky? You want to avoid court, yep. minimize taxes, and control your wishes. For that, you need a document. To have the document, you need a law firm that's been doing this for more than 70 years, Eckberg Lammers. They'll take care of it. You leave it where your family can see it. Then they pick it up and they go, damn, the old guy took care of us. Everything's spelled out here. And then you avoid probate court. They take care of, uh, maybe you have property differences in the family. They'll take care of that. Snowbirds, you have tax questions. They'll take care of that. Uh, a lot of people think estate planning is just for old people. It's not. If you're a parent or a grandparent with young kids, you need to have a will prepared so if you die, a court knows who you selected as a guardian for those kids. All of these, look at the government has its hands in every aspect of our lives. Hell yeah. They'll have a hand in, the, in your life even if you're not here. So avoid that with Eckberg Lammers. Make an appointment with Eckberg Lammers at 651-439-2878 or visit EckbergLammers.com. Here's a man who spends hours in hardware stores, sifting through the nuts and bolts of life. Joe Souchere. Here's John Height. No, here's Kenny Olson. I mean, here's Kenny Olson. Getting my stopwatch ready. Hey, uh, <laughs> you need a gun? I can, I can get you a gun. No problem. DK Mags has a full stock of the most modern firearms and ammunition right there in the building. And if you're looking for something specific or maybe rare, get on the website, dkmags.com. They can take special orders on specialty items. Um, but keep in mind, when you're on dkmags.com, they might not have the firearms they have in the gun case in the store on the website. So that's where you got to pick up the phone or better yet, stop in and visit them. A uh, vast amount of knowledge there at DK Mags, both with their on-site and off-site gun, um, gunsmithing guys. Um, those difficult issues, don't worry about it. Bring it in. They'll send it out, have their guy get right on it. They've got the buying power of a big, big, big shop. That means they can get good deals on a lot of firearms for you. But in turn with that, it's not like walking into a big, um, intimidating Big box store. It's a small town feel in there. It's wonderful. Uh, fair pricing, quality firearms, and a very accommodating staff. DK Mags on Old 8 New Brighton and on the web, dkmags.com. Here is John Height. Uh, thank you, Joe. Uh, before we continue, uh, let me tell you right now for the free lunch, if you want to uh, apply for that mm -hmm. in a school, you have to fill out a sheet that has, uh, you have to talk about your household income and your household size. Why? So you don't have to turn in tax returns, but you just have to put the income and size of the household on there. And uh, they'll see if you qualify. Well, no. So, Apparently, everybody will qualify. Well, right now, though, Joe, we oh, were right talking. Right now, I'm sorry. At, I'm sorry. At the end of the last uh, session. There, I'm sorry. <laughs> how what? you would what Thanks, I've noticed <laughs> since I just got my taxes back from uh, Linda Keller. 
yeah. um, that that what you earn and what you have in your bank account can be vastly, vastly oh, yeah. different. Oh, oh, yeah. Vastly Jeez. different. <laughs> no kidding. Well, no kidding. <laughs> Who keeps what they earn in their checking account? <laughs> are you, no, are you doing no, okay today? Wait, hang on. Jesus. Kenny, Kenny, <laughs> just tell. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Is everything okay? Sit yeah. Sit the next few plays out. Yeah. Maybe. Okay. I'm, o- I'm almost afraid to read any news. <laughs> yeah, that's what I worried about, too. <laughs> I definitely have, to, the- definitely have to eat bad. Definitely. <laughs> In the news, a new report has shed light on the Met Council's handling of the Southwest Light Rail Project. The Minnesota Legislative Auditor's Office released a report this morning, uh, yesterday morning, excuse me, that details how the group, no, this morning, that details how the group wants to spend hundreds of millions of dollars in additional funding on a project that's already years behind schedule and over budget. In the report, the auditor's office says it's recommended that the state legislature create a framework where the government entity that's responsible for light rail transit construction also shares some financial responsibility for costs and potential cost increases for construction. Why wouldn't you do that first? Not, not, anyway, uh, because that, uh, well, I, I'm just supposed to take time off. Yeah, you just <laughs> you just sit in the rocker. We'll let you know when the lemonade's coming. That recommendation was made due to the framework for developing these projects. It has a mismatch between the entities that fund the construction of transit projects and the entities that are responsible for constructing them. The audit also says the Met Council was obligated to spend additional funds on the project for increased costs than what it had already been committed because it didn't have enough money to finish or halt the project. The project is a billion dollars over budget. More than double at this point, and it's been a concern wow. of lawmakers. It was supposed to be done by 2018 for $1.25 billion. It now sits at $2.74 billion and is scheduled to be finished in 2027. Go ahead, yep. Joe. We release you. Go well, ahead. And, and the condo over there in the lakes area, that's cracking apart yep. again. Yeah, it's yep. uh, these people don't know what they're doing, and they're unelected. But at what point? Oh, well, the elected someone people don't know what they're doing. Raise either. their hand and say, uh, "We got to put a stop to." You this. don't have Ooh. people in power in positions in this state to do that. There's no adults. no adults. Wow. No adults. Yeah, and and even with this report, they're trying to tell them what to do, but you know they'll never do it. Right. They'll never follow the recommendations. Wow. So. U.S. Representative Angie Craig says she thinks she has some insight into why postal delivery is having problems after she received thousands of complaints and sent out a U.S. Postal Service survey. Many residents report no mail for several days at a time. In other areas, uh, like mine up here, the mail is delivered around 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. Wow. wow. Oh, get yeah. this. Uh, I didn't get any mail yesterday. That's not plausible. Uh, we get so much mail that it's not plausible yeah, that we didn't have any mail He's yesterday. going Newman on you? I don't know. Yeah, two or three days a week, ours shows up at 7 or 8 p.m. Hmm. So on March 10th, uh, Craig delivered 3,361 responses for Minnesotans to Postmaster General Louis DeJoy's office in Washington. On December 30th, she wrote to DeJoy expressing her frustrations with the Postal Service in the 2nd Congressional District and urging him to send support. Instead of responding to her, Craig said DeJoy had a legislative aid respond. Craig said, in the survey I sent out, postal workers are telling me that management are asking them to deliver the Amazon packages before they deliver mail. Craig and her district's residents think the postal disruptions have another problem, staffing shortages. Some folks answering the survey said they were told by USPS employees that more people are needed to be hired, but that wasn't happening. Craig says if staffing shortage is an issue, then servicing standards should change. For their part, despite mail issues last week, the Postal Service says delivery has been steady, with about 91% of first-class mail delivered on time. If you've not received mail, the Postal Service asks that you contact them. In Craig's district, some folks said they go up to a week and a half without receiving any mail. What's the uh, bigger roll of the dice, Joe? John's mail or your newspaper with your guy? <laughs> oh, the newspaper is not, if there's no chance to get that on weekends at a time when you want to read it. I buy the paper on weekends. Oh. Even though it ultimately gets delivered. Okay. Yeah. What's really handy is you just go to your computer and read it. I don't like to do that, John. <laughs> Johnny, but I'm not telling I used, you that. I used again. to hate it. I used to hate it too, Joe, but now I've learned to love it. So. Yeah, I don't like that. 
A couple of roller dogs late again today, huh? It's tough to play hocus focus on the computer. Right. It doesn't it doesn't come oh, in you clear can play. enough? It's I. It's fine. It's not clear it's enough. Cl- I need to see the cartoon. Oh my god! The uh, those are reruns, you, by the way. Yeah, one joke. of a kind, Such, One of a kind. Some of the hocus focuses you're doing are yeah. 40 years old. It was so. that Bolt House or Bolton. Bolt. Yep, yeah, yep. yeah. He's still doing it. He's been dead for 21 years. Well, he did a hell of a job. <laughs> that Marmaduke. <laughs> that Marmaduke. That Marmaduke. Yeah, crazy dog. <laughs> <laughs> the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources. I stole that from a. Um, I was watching The Simpsons one time. Yes. And uh, uh, yeah. Homer was sitting in his easy chair and he just goes, <laughs> That crazy Marmaduke, he was reading the funnies. <laughs> it just, just, that was funny. I always that thought you were funny. doing Jesse. No, it was Homer Simpson sitting there, and he just, <laughs> that crazy Marmaduke, and he just goes on. What was the comic of choice for the former governor? Uh, you know what? I, I don't, don't know that he, he ever. Oh, story. I thought he did. I thought he had a favorite. That's I what can't... I thought was Marmaduke. No, but, uh, well, maybe huh. he likes dogs. You know, yeah. Franklin, the remember the, uh, what, the boxer that had the, the bad the, flatulence problem? Yeah, bad uh, bowel problem. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you still on your Charlie Brown kick? Yes, every day. Every day. That, that and Hocus read, Focus. Read, That's all I, I do. I read it every day, too. you got to read Pearls Before Swine. I don't like that. Oh, uh, it's wonderful. Charlie it's wonderful. Brown deserved to get his butt kicked. What a pain no, in the ass was that, that kid was. soul from Jeez. Charles M. Schultz. little self. Uh, it, the oh, guy no. who had a lot of fun with uh, Charlie Brown is Super 70 Sports. You know, now take yourself out of the game. Well, what's with the ego? You suck. You talking about Charlie? Yeah, yeah. He'll he'll. He, said, he so. says questionably. Uh, you're talking about Charlie, right? <laughs> no, but he'll have a panel where Charlie says something deep, and then Super Seven. He says the kid is bleeping seven years old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And how many times are you going to fall for that chick pulling the ball away when yeah. you're trying to oh, do she, a kickoff? She, this time, I'm really going to hold it. She is evil. Oh, oh God, she's a she's sweetheart. She's no, she's, she's the not. only true, honest, good person oh, in no, that she's Horrible. Oh, my oh God. she's a wonderful it's kid. Horrible. You know, it was never really discovered. Was uh, we needed more on the uh, the red haired girl? What uh, what was her well, story? That was uh, peppermint patty. No, no this no, is the one who had a crush on. Didn't he oh, see the red her at camp? Girl, Didn't he yeah. see her at camp one time? Yes. I don't remember how yep. they met, but he he uh, he took a liking to her. Started yeah. stalking her basically in yeah. the newspaper. Well, it's, you know, in today's standards, yes. <laughs> today's standards. <laughs> By today's standards, yes, that would be stalking. The Minnesota Department of Natural Resources is seeing a shortage in officers, and the agency is working to attract new candidates. Statewide, the agency needs to fill about 20 conservation officer positions. Now, usually, you'd need a four-year degree in law law enforcement, uh, but the state now says they will target anyone with love of the outdoors and a two-year associate degree in any field. Basically, they're doing what everyone else is doing and just lowering their standards. Yeah, pretty much. I'd Uh, love a gig with the DNR if it was on a lake. I could be mm. a lake guy. Yeah. The most hated person out there. Yeah. Was I the only one that received the email from the guy who was talking about this uh, and saying that the DNR booth wasn't even occupied at the outdoor show this I year? I did not know that. Oh, I thought that email huh. went to all of us. Maybe he just sent it I to me. I did not see that email. <laughs> the agency <laughs> Noted. Yeah. I'm not getting my mail. Noted. Noted up. Not getting my mail. Uh, the agency says they're just looking for good people with a love of the outdoors, and they can teach you the rest. And they say so far Here's they have gun. seen Get out a lot out there. of <laughs> no training required. Program. It's like driving the bus. God. No training required. <laughs> no one said they'd train you. Come oh, on, fellas. Sure. sure. Oh, my God. U.S. prosecutors said yesterday they will no longer seek the death penalty for that Minnesota man already on death row, but awaiting resentencing for the kidnapping and killing of college student Drew Chaudin in 2003. U.S. Attorney Mac Schneider in North Dakota filed a notice with the court withdrawing his effort to seek the death penalty for Alfonso Rodriguez Jr., a move he told the Associated Press he had to make after he was, quote, straightforwardly directed by Attorney General Merrick Garland to do so. Oh, wow. Shodine, a Minnesota woman, was a 22-year-old University of North Dakota student when she was abducted from a Grand Forks, North Dakota mall parking lot in November 2003. Rodriguez, a sex offender, was arrested the next month. Despite several massive searches, Shodine's body wasn't found until the following April near Crookston, Minnesota. North Dakota Republican Attorney General Drew Wrigley, who was the U.S. attorney who prosecuted Rodriguez, 
was critical of this decision. He said the result is a grave affront to justice and to the hearts and souls of all who loved and cared for Drew Chaudin. The only possible sentence for Rodriguez now is life in prison without the possibility of parole. And it's not sure when the formal sentencing of all of so this will take place. The, the new hippie attorney general, does he just want to set him free? Let him... What the hell's the motive? I saw this on the news last night. I didn't the, follow it. The well, motive is, is... Go ahead. I'm sorry, John. The, the, Merrick Garland is the attorney general, the person to... Uh, the yeah. Biden campaign, actually part of when he ran for the presidency, was to get rid of the death penalty in federal cases. Oh, and this is a federal so he's case, so that's, following orders. Exactly. He was, I'm sure... Is uh, this guy at the Twitch farm, or is he in hardcore lockup? Uh, he's in a hardcore lockup. I actually, uh, I think I told you guys this, uh, a fellow I went to school with was an assistant to Drew Wrigley, the prosecutor, in Fargo when all this went down. And I saw him at a class reunion four or five years ago, and he didn't want to retire, he said, until he knew Rodriguez would end up with the death penalty. Hmm. Unfortunately, he had to retire two years ago. Uh, yeah. So none of this worked out for him, which uh, is unfortunate. Yeah. But, uh, Anyway, well, the apologies Miller, to her family if it helps. Yep. Yeah. Didn't she the disappear Miller, from Hinckley? No, it was Grand no, Forks was, area. Yeah, or was, Crooks was, I'm thinking of someone mall. who disappeared from Hinckley. Uh, Katie Port. No, she was Moose Lake. Yeah. No, it was up on yeah. the border. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Go on, John. Miller Hill Mall in Duluth evacuated yesterday after a roof collapse. Luckily, no injuries. The season snow total at the Duluth Airport now stands at more than 116 inches, more than 40 inches above normal for this point in the season. Miller Hill Mall is the largest shopping center in Duluth. It opened in 1973. It's undergone extensive remodeling and renovation over the years. I've been there. To where? I've been to Miller Hill Mall. Oh. There we must will, have been uh, some uh, uh, stress on the roof. That's right, man. See, a lot of snow, Joe. That's right. It weighs it weighs heavy on you. That's right. We'll uh, we'll come back with more <laughs> valuable insights in the news like that one right after this. You know when you're uh, about to file your taxes so you can pay for all those school lunches? Yes. Do it with the best, won't uh, you? All right. And that's Linda Keller and Keller Tax Service. KellerTaxService.com is the website. Why don't you just give her a call and set up that appointment today before you run out of time. 320-352-0013. Linda is a GLer, and she's been at this for over 20 years. She prepares all types of returns for all types of professions and businesses. She has perfected the virtual tax appointment via video or and phone, and it's also safe document exchange, both encrypted and secure. It's the confidence of a professional with the convenience of staying home, and she also has competitive pricing to do-it-yourself software, 320-352-0013, or just go online. KellerTaxService.com is the website. And you've got to get that appointment set up. She does evenings, Saturdays, and those also fill up fast. So KellerTaxService.com, book your appointment. Tell her you heard about her here on the Garage Logic Podcast. <laughs> Justice and the Suture. It's not too early to say a beautiful lawn is just a click away at professionalturf.com. It won't be long. That snow on the lawn will be gone. And if you want the best lawn on the block, it's so simple. Go with the pros at Professional Turf. GLers have been doing this by the thousands for years. They're a Minnesota lawn care company since 82. You schedule a free in-person lawn care analysis and, uh, and that estimate. And a proturf.com pro will come out and walk your lawn. These are experienced techs that have been doing it for years. They'll assess your lawn, customize a slow-release fertilizer and weed control plan that is environmentally safe, guaranteed for results just for your track, not for anybody else's. Every single one is different. That beautiful, healthy lawn, free of crabgrass, dandelions, and broadleaf weeds, it's just a click away at professionalturf.com. Other news, uh, we just have a breaking news story that uh, isn't as important as the other ones, but uh, people might be interested. Uh, do you guys remember Bobby Caldwell, the singer? Uh, he had a big hit, What You Won't Do for Love, in the 70s. Vaguely. Great song. Uh, Bobby has died after a long illness. He was 71 years old. He had continued performing, uh, performing both R&B and jazz uh, well, up to last year, actually, according to this. So uh, I have some Bobby breaking Caldwell. news, too. 
Now, what do you got? Uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, claims that he intends to play for the Jets. All right. He intends to play for the Jets. Oh, know. that's right. He was on, uh, what's his name's podcast I don't today. know. Pat McAfee. Ma- McAfee, yeah. thank so you. So what did, is his contract up with the Green? I don't understand. Yes. No. No. No, it's no. not up. Yes, no, They're I gonna, don't know. So they'll <laughs> perform some type of trade or cash or something. Right. Yeah, they, the Packers said they would accommodate whatever he wanted to do, and apparently he wants to go play with the Jets, and they've agreed to something with the Jets, so we'll see what the Packers get. Are the Jets any go. good? They will be with him. Yeah, they'll be decent. Okay. They also, I, yesterday they signed, we've turned this into sports, uh, Alan Lazard, who was basically his favorite uh who did, Green Bay or the Jets? The Jets did. Oh, that was, means that that weighs in his favor of going to well, the Jets. Well, was, he was Rodgers' favorite target last right. year, so who I knows? thought anyway. No, yeah. I thought Benny was his favorite target. No, we don't want to that do that, Rook. That's is just funny. dibble stuff. That's funny. I did it's not. See, I didn't say it, though. You had to think it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't get that, so okay. I'm just going to move right along here in the news. Benny and the... Oh, jeez. Okay, it? I get it. Was, it. it was bad. It was not. Really? It called for self. I thought it was better. It called for self. I apologize, then, guy. <laughs> Big stocks in the U.S. and Europe tumbling today as the global financial system continued to reckon with the Silicon Valley bank collapse, the largest bank failure since 2008. Uh, shares of Credit Suisse fell more than 26 percent in early trading after a top backer said he would not be able to provide any more cash to support the Swiss bank. The pressure on the banking industry appeared to strain some of the largest U.S. banks, too. City falling nearly 5 percent this morning. J.P. Morgan Chase and Wells Fargo each dropped 4 uh, percent. As of uh, oh, about 10 minutes ago, the Dow was down 532 points. A major winter storm dumping multiple feet of snow on parts of the Northeast, knocking out power at one point to more than a quarter of a million customers with more snow on the way. No deaths have been reported in the Nor'easter that has been hitting New England and other states. A lot in New England woke up to neighborhoods blanketed in white Wednesday morning with three feet of snow recorded in Mariah, Stony Creek, and Palinville, New York. The Nor'easter is expected to move away later today, but morning snow showers will linger across parts of the northwest, uh, northeast excuse me, and New England, also expecting wind gusts of 30 to 40 miles an hour. Already, top winds of 71 miles an hour recorded in French Borough, Maine. Uh, If you missed it, here in uh, our neck of the woods, we do have a winter storm watch for tomorrow evening. We're expecting four to seven inches of snow. The Confider, a website that deals with the media, says your favorite paper, Mr. Souchere, is in for a bit of a shakeup. The Wall Street Journal? Yeah, Wall Street Journal appears poised for some serious changes as newly installed editor-in-chief Emma Tucker's vision takes shape. Multiple people familiar with the situation told Confiner that Tucker is keen on shifting the paper away from commodity news and toward a hardcore focus on exclusives and investigations. In an address to about 30 staffers in the San Francisco Bureau last week, Tucker indicated she's been unimpressed by the journal's current audience data and has begun a thorough content review to get a sense of which stories are being read and how, according to multiple attendees. Under the Tucker regime, expect to see less live blogging in favor of broader news and analysis. Sources also say Tucker intends to slash the paper's laborious and time-consuming internal bureaucracy required to publish stories on page one, major source of irritation for reporters who work at the journal. The former Sunday Times editor was quizzed by staffers at the meeting about layoff rumors and responded with vague answers, but she did say she hopes cuts would be delayed a few months while she settles into the gig. When asked for a comment on all this, a Wall Street Journal spokesperson had no comment. Well, I hope she doesn't screw it up. It's a pretty good newspaper the way it is. And a human hand found by a man walking his dog on Staten Island last week has been identified as that of a woman buried nearby. The body part was discovered at Amboy Road and Cunningham Road on Thursday afternoon, belonged to a 63-year-old woman who died in 2011, according to the city's medical examiner. The deceased woman, who's not yet been publicly named, was buried in a wooden coffin at Resurrection Cemetery, a Catholic burial ground on Staten Island's South Shore, just over a mile from where her digits were found. The hand is believed to have been dislodged sometime around the end of February when the plot next to the woman's resting place was excavated for a new burial, according to officials. Poltergeist. The equipment is likely... hand s- hanging out of the ca- casket? Yeah, going like this. Hey, <laughs> leave me alone. What the hell? 
<laughs> the equipment likely separated the hand from the woman's remains, and it was subsequently lost in the excess soil dumped in a nearby tree line. Holy. In a statement to uh, local newscasters, a spokesperson for the cemetery said the remains, uh, they will take care of them. They will respectively re interior them. At well, the you, is, she gonna, is the hand going to get its own plot? They'll I believe they'll put it They'll find back the in. owner. Yeah. Well, they, uh, they already find, they know who she is. Yeah, but they'll anyway. dig up the owner and reattach the hand. Right. Yeah. Sorry, hon. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think they'll reattach Probably it. Probably just toss it in there. Just, throw, right. just throw, open yeah. it up and yeah, throw right. it in. <laughs> and Tucker Carlson's portrayal of the January 6th attack as a largely peaceful event on his primetime Fox News show set off uh, what advanced democracy is calling a dangerous new wave of social media chatter that included death threats against Capitol Police officers and other leaders. The segment that aired last week, of course, downplayed the violence as we know at the Capitol, uh, recasting the Washington mob that breached the Capitol as an orderly and meek gathering of sightseers. On Twitter, posts related to January 6th using violent rhetoric increased fivefold from the previous week. The outpouring of violence concerns extremism experts who said Carlson and Fox are playing with fire by spreading disinformation that could inspire violence against the targets of their coverage. Incendiary comments spread on main social media platforms like Twitter and also on other platforms like Gab, Getter, 4chan, and Trump's own Truth Social, according to the Advanced Democracy Report. Violent threats included calls to lynch January 6th committee members and Democratic lawmakers. A uh, Getter user wrote, God does not sleep. Every one of them in the January 6th committee will have to pay for what they did. Other calls called for uh, hanging them all, referring to two of the January 6th committee members. Streaming platforms Rumble and TikTok were also rife with talk, including claims that January 6th was a so-called false flag operation. Users called for mass arrests and charges of treason against January 6th committee members, according to the study by Advanced Democracy. Then what did I see? Did, I, I yeah. Apparently, what I saw, I didn't see. Huh? Right. Yeah. That's uh-huh. what I'm... That was my... Next sentence. Something like no, that. No, it wasn't. No. What did I see then? <laughs> How am I supposed to know? I don't know what poster? you saw. Did you just say poster? Yeah. How am I supposed to know? How am I supposed to know? Uh, yeah. Hello? Tourists don't enter museums by climbing in. No, they go through the front door. That's right. And they have to have a ticket. Right. Yeah. You think Are you done, means- John? I am. Yeah. Oh, you think that for museums would all have all the windows alarmed and yeah. not allow this to happen? Yeah. Was right, that thank- jackass Ben Stiller working uh, security there? Is that why? Right. Yeah, he is. Right. Tonight at the museum. <laughs> yeah, museum. Why don't we take a time out, son? Okay. This guy wears many hats, just not indoors. Joe Souchere. So we're very pleased to tell you about a wonderful local company that's been around for 100 years, four generations. I'm talking about Ray N. Welter Heating, online at welterheating.com. Based in Minneapolis, they've proudly provided Minneapolis HVAC services such as installation, maintenance, repair of Minneapolis air conditioners, Twin Cities, homes, heating systems, air purifiers, and such. During the winter months, they've got an on-call 24 hours a day for emergency service. So if it's making some noises, don't wait too long. I know it's nice and warm right now, but listen, you depend on that and you can depend on Ray N. Welter Heating to service it or fix it. So if you want to learn more services about what they offer, maybe request a quote or just give us a buzz about, uh, hey, this is not working today. I need somebody over here as soon as possible. Call 612-825-6867. 612-825-6867. The great thing about Welter is they're not concerned about telling you, we've done this, we've been here this long. They just want to say, we're here for you, and we have been for 100 years. So they know that garage logicians love a good value, and you want honesty, and you want integrity. That's what you get with Ray and Welter Heating. Welterheating.com. Give them a call. Send them an email. Let them know that the Rook sent you for 100 years, and probably 100 years more. It's Welter Heating. Heating.com. Kelly sent me a picture of a ribbon, and Kelly notes just so many thoughts about this ribbon. How big is the podium? Are there ribbons for 17th place, 18th, all participants? 
Was the ribbon produced using petroleum products? How will we reward all of the participants when the regressive shut that production down? Just a thought as I walked down the service road. Sent me a picture of a ribbon. It says Minnesota Regional Swimming. I don't know if that's AAU or high schools. Okay. 16th place. Minnesota Regional Swimming, 16th yeah, 16th place. 16th place. <laughs> Is, it, is that good or bad? Which is why Kelly's wondering, what what is this? 16th right. place? Out of how many? 20? Oh, uh, who would even have, who would display a 16th place ribbon? Uh, you know what? I, I don't think I would. I think that would go in the drawer. <laughs> you'd have it on your lapel. Yeah, I was just going to say, you'd no, have it yeah. hanging from Let's your see, neck. What do I got? Here? Hang on. Let me see what I got. 16th place. Hey, yeah. I beat 17th. That's D+. Plus. You're right, I would. I'd hang that sucker right front and center. And you know what I do? I try to scratch out the the one. No, it's so it the was six. sixth place. No, or, no, because nobody would believe I would be first place. That's but true. But they would believe that I would be sixth place. Our president, Joe Biden, participated in a second reception this week for the Democratic National Committee in Las Vegas. On purpose or by accident? Where he urged those in attendance to take climate change more seriously. Well, I won't, Joe. He compared it to nuclear war. Just one day after a fundraiser in Rancho Santa Fe, California. Boy, those liberals don't hang out in poor areas, yeah, do they? They're nope. not in uh, Rancho Santa Alabama. Fe is about as tony as it gets. Just one day after a fundraiser in Rancho Santa Fe where Biden accidentally revealed a previously unknown detail about former President Jimmy Carter's health. I think he said he's going to give the eulogy. Whoops. He made a number of off-the-cuff comments about climate change, including the Colorado River will dry up. You're not going to be able to drink out of the Colorado River, Biden said to a crowd of about 60 people. He also likened climate change to nuclear war as a truly existential threat facing the country. Not a joke, the president said, because he feels compelled to always say, this isn't a joke. Right. It's not funny. So and why do you think it was a joke? Look. Yeah. When he's going to respond, look. Look, look. Right. The only existential threat that faces this country is the decline of this country. The only existential threat is the decline of moral and ethical integrity. It's not the Colorado River, which is probably overflowing its banks right now due to the blessings of the atmospheric rivers. Uh, I don't want to read about him, do I? This is This is serious stuff. It's the single most dire consequence. If we don't keep it below 1.5 degrees Celsius, we're going to damn our children to circumstances where we are the only true existential threat of nuclear war. I don't even know what he means. Well, but isn't that about as insulting as it gets to, mm. to, to compare climate change to nuclear mm -hmm. war? Are you kidding? Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. Uh, Joe, uh... Uh, good luck to you. Somebody got a second straight. Uh, ain't going to be me, is it? No meat. And the Duluth City Council, because the world's been waiting for this. The Duluth City Council failed to pass a resolution Monday in support of a nuclear treaty banning nuclear weapons. Oh. Because the world was wondering what the uh, city council in Duluth <laughs> Was, uh, was we were hanging on the it. edge of our seat. Yeah, they had a four-four. Uh, they had a four-four vote on that. they uh, they have they have solved everything else in Duluth, except for a, their roof on their mall, which is another liberal wreck. Yep, they've uh, solved everything else. So now they're worried about uh, nuclear uh, war there in uh, Duluth. <laughs> Only. No wait. Can we? Can we do a, a weather, quick weather forecast here? Sure. Our uh, Jonathan Newhaus 5 Eyewitness News forecast for tomorrow calling for cloudy and breezy conditions with rain, some thunder, then rain changing to snow after 1 p.m. tomorrow with 2 to 4 inches of snow accumulation. Uh, the chance for rain is one, uh, and rain and snow is 100%. The high tomorrow, 39 degrees. You know what that means for the snowfall? No. Heart attack yep. snow. Yeah. Yep. Today is the day 
GLers, get off your ass and jam. Get to Tri-State Bobcat. They've got locations in Burnsville, Little Canada, and Hudson. They're having a big sale on Toro snowblowers right now. Uh, the Toro Power Clear, the single stage blowers, and the Power Max two stage blowers, all on sales. You won't find a better deal. And whichever one you opt for, you'll look forward to the big snowfall coming tomorrow. Uh, same uh, kind of deal going on with zero turn mowers at Tri State. The best pricing of the year right now on select previous model years, both the Time Cutter and Titan zero turn mowers, 42 to 60 inches. Discounts ranging from 10 to 20% under promo pricing. Uh, you've got to get to Tri-State. Do it today. Get that thing home and gassed up and ready to go. And if you're down in Oatana, Mankey is the key. They're now part of the Tri-State family. All the pricing and promos you hear on GL also available in Oatana. Hudson, Little Canada, and Burnsville and everything they carry, you can find it at tristatebobcat.com. We could be the only outlet where you'll get an update on the Iditarod, the sled dog oh, yeah. race yeah. from our friend Bill Stein. He was following a fellow he knows named Kelly Maxner, who's a dentist. Uh, Maxner ran a great race and finished sixth. He'd probably get a ribbon, sixth place ribbon. Right. The race was won by Ryan Reddington, the grandson of the founder of the race. Oh, cool. He won $55,000, some gold nuggets, 25 pounds of salmon, some beaver mittens, and a beaver hat. That's a pretty cool first place prize. Fifty-five grand. Yeah, and gold nuggets wow. and salmon. Last I'd rather. Year, uh, yes, I'd rather have a beaver face mask. Last year's winner, Brent Sass, who was originally. <laughs> Did you just get that. Did you just get that one. It took a while to register. Obviously. Came around the block, and there it was. Jeez. God forgive them. They know not what they do. What's Brent's last name? Last year's winner, Brent Sass. <laughs> who was originally from Excelsior, was leading the race, but had to drop out because of a severe toothache. Isn't that ironic? Well, because wow. Kelly, right behind him, uh, was a dentist. Huh. That sounds like a made-up name. Kelly is a true GLer. He even builds his own dog sleds in his garage. So, huh. got quite a first prize package there, almost like the Oscars where you get that gift bag of everything. <laughs> right? Brett Sass. Swag. Huh? The guy who won is named... Sass. <laughs> Give me no sass, Chris. The guy's, name who, who, the guy's name who won is Ryan Reddington. He's the grandson. Of the uh, founder. Right. Brett Sass did not win. He had to drop out. Bad tooth. <laughs> Face mask. <laughs> Only because they come to us. <laughs> Only because they come to us. Where? Uh huh. Well, uh, the Lymans are now in Johannesburg, South mm -hmm. Africa. Worldwide Wapage. Wapage. <laughs> it's a wascally wabbit. <laughs> I was thinking of things. Yeah, uh, I bet you were. <laughs> we all are, Joe. Just give up those thoughts. Here's the uh, deal. This yep. is this date in Minnesota history. On this day in 1927. March 15th. The Arrowhead Bridge across the St. Louis River opened, linking West Duluth to Superior, Wisconsin. Huh. On this day in 1941. 315. Don't you have the nerve to complain about the weather today? Oh, would we have? 31 people, mostly unsuspecting motorists caught on the roads, died in a blizzard, the second killer snowstorm of the season. What year did you uh, say? 1941. Wow. 41 was a bad year, wasn't it? Then by the time they got around to December, there was the invasion of Pearl Harbor, yeah. and you had blizzards. And On this day in 2002. March 15th. The Minnesota State Legislature passed a law requiring that diesel fuel sold in Minnesota must contain at least 2% biodiesel from animal or vegetable fats. The law also projected future increases in this percentage up to 20%. So it was a, another boondoggle for corn because uh, that stuff's not any good. And that concludes this day in Minnesota's history. All right. Very good. Brent, thank you. <laughs> GLers, do us a favor. Hit the subscribe button on the Garage Logic 
YouTube channel because there uh, we are posting content for you every single day. And uh, you can follow Garage Logic on all of the social media channels Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, the Garage Logic Town Council, 10 bucks a month or $100 a year. You get behind the scenes footage of watching Joe yell at us when we go to break. It's fantastic. <laughs> Find out more at garagelogic.com.